And we're going, okay, so we now have a sense of how the network's wired. We, it's not a super, super dense social network, but it has some density, has some structure. Uh, we've looked at average uh, path length. And now we're going to say, well, oh, and I should, we should look at clustering. Oh, I forgot clustering. Well, you guys get to watch a, a search. This is OK. And what is a clustering coefficient? Remember, a cluster, what clustering gives us is a sense, if we uh, remember these ideas about uh, transitivity, a global clustering coefficient is the number of fully connected triads or triplets over the number of both closed and open triplets. And what this gets a sense of is how bunchy the network is. OK, so I am going to open up Chrome. And I'm going to search in iGraph. Guess what? I don't know every single function in iGraph, nor should you. You have too many, you, your brain cells are finite, and there's too many other important things. So we have Google and we have search, and that's OK. Even for people who've done lots of research analysis, you don't remember everything all the time. And frankly, I also, we also often work in multiple packages. And while there are similarities between the packages, and you can make good guesses, um, the particular syntax of any one package, there may be little, little differences. So it's better just to check, especially when you're on camera. All right, so I'm going clustering coefficient. How do I do that in iGraph? All right, transitivity, I manual pages. Well, I know that's connected transitivity, so I'm, I think that's a good thing. And I'm going down here. And we have these examples at the bottom. So frequently, this is what they'll do is they'll have the options of the arguments up top. It's very confusing. You can read through. I suggest reading through them. But if you at first just want to see, does this work, go down to the bottom where the examples are and copy and paste the examples. And then you can go back and unpack how it works. And I do suggest doing that step, but don't drive yourself nuts looking at the uh, statements at top. Otherwise, you'll despair. All right, so I see this transitive argument. They're making a network here. Uh, there's just a transitive statement. I think I'm going to trust this and go with something simple right now. Um, I think these weighted ones would be good things. So, uh, what a weighted, if I had particularly, if I had weighted ties, I would care about that. There may be other weighting uh, in here that's important. But right now, I just want a general sense because my ties are just zeros and ones, right? They're just binary ties. So, I'm, so look at, so, uh, this gives us help for, you know, what do these things mean? So I have transitivity. I have G. G is just G for graph, so I can replace that with my actual name of my graph object, which is discussion graph 2. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Now I'm going to put this in here. All right, I'm going to, or I'm just going to type this in and hope that R tells, gives me the right thing. Yes, it does. Now, I could just do this right now, and it would give all the numbers in the console statement. And that can be useful sometimes. But I often like looking at it as a data object. So I'm going to do, I'm going to make, uh, do that by adding, I'm going to call this discussion transitivity or trans or something. All right. So the string on the left-hand side of the arrow, where the arrow is pointing to it, that's the name of the new object I'm creating. And then the arrow says, you're making this object. And how are you making this object? You're making this object by doing the command transitivity on the data object discussion graph 2. All right. So let's highlight this. And it did it. Now. I'm also going to just do this as a score because it should be just a single number. Let's see what we got. 0.28. OK. So any guesses between? This is our discussion network. So I'll, my guess is the discussion networks, I might be wrong, it might, is going to be a little bit bunchier. And why is that? Is because I think people are coming in with their discussion networks already pre-established. 
Uh, people, um, it's a sort of more risky tie, uh, extending out to pe writing papers with people or doing more in-depth collaboration. So generally, I suspect that people do that with uh, their close set of colleagues, and therefore we're going to get uh, these little bunches of co-authors together, and um, as opposed to our do you know people network, I expect that will be bunchy too, but not quite as bunchy. In the, or a, in network talk, we call that as a sortivity. It's a little more, or we use clun clustering, but I think buster, bunchy works too. I would expect um, the discussion network to have some clustering in it because people are coming from places and they know people in the past, and so they have their pre existing friendship networks. But because friendship is a less uh, costly kind of tie, I suspect that it may have a slightly lower clustering coefficient. But we'll find out. Okay. All right, transitivity. And this time we want the colleague network graph too. I'm going to do it all because then R can tell me, and I'm less likely to make a mistake based on the way I spelled it. Okay. So let's try this. 0.33. Wow. Wow. It's a little more bunchy. Why, why might that be? Well, I should look at some other things. I get, ah, I wonder. When, remember when we looked at the network and we saw that there was this little triad split out? So we had a central component in the discussion network and then we have these little, well, you'll see it again in a minute. I suspect that that, um, that is a little less uh, clustered than the colleague network because uh, there are people that aren't even connected that all they're doing is is um, hanging out. So the main uh, component may have a little more clustering, but globally, um, you know, you have these little these little components floating around. I suspect these ties are highly correlated. The people you know are correlated with people that you do um, that you do re discuss research with. And it just might be that the clustering is lower in the discussion network, frankly, because the density of the ties is lower overall. So there's a lot of, there's, there's some clustering. This is not appearing in the colleague network because, frankly, it's a little bit sparser network. But we can explore that. So we're now moving to our positional analysis. And so we're now we're looking at who are the important people in the network. And oftentimes people jump to this, but remember that these are a function of the things we just did. You know, your position is a, a consequence of how the network's wired and then your unique placement in that wiring, right? So it's good to get this connectionist sense of like, how is the network working in general before jumping into these positional uh, features. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna start with degree, and remember in our first network we had it in degree. But first of all, I'm going to calculate degree, and I'm going to make these data objects because now each node's going to have a degree score associated with it, and I certainly don't want to read all those degree scores in the console window. So I'm running that, and now I'm making a little data object called discussion out degree. And, and I, obviously I can make a histogram of this, right? And I could get a general sense. And I actually would encourage you to do that. Anything where I'm opening up this data object and sorting it is probably better visualized as a histogram. So we see our top degree is 54 out degree. Um, our top out degree is 54 ties out. And there are some people who sent no ties to anyone. Well, I guess they don't like anyone in any event. We can do the same thing for in degree, and I think we should. It's always good to compare these degree measures. And we should actually look at the score. So before I like visualize the nodes, and that looked great and all that, but why don't we get a little bit more detail? So in I graph, degree is going to have in, out, and all. And I remember corresponding to our discussion about degree. You know, all is 
would just be the measure if you didn't know directionality, just all the connections coming in and out. So iGraph is allowing us to do this. And remember, if I didn't have a directed network, <laughs> out degree and in degree would be equivalent to degree and would be meaningless. Um, actually, R would, uh, I, R would flag you and say, this is an attracted network. I'm going to give you a warning. But all right. So I'm going to do in. I just, that's all. And I'm going to rename it because out degree. It's not out degree, it's in degree. Of course, um, I could also reuse a data object, but I'm just going to call it in degree. And I'm running it. Opening up in degree. All right. Oh, did I? Why is it still called out degree? Let me check that. What's up with that? Ah, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta, when you move it into this other thing, you gotta call it the right thing. Funny that. Okay. So now I bet you'll work. Otherwise, I was going to have exactly the same number as 54 and 0. So my guess is that in degree is going to be less, that the top in degree. All right, let's hit again. Oh, yeah, that doesn't quite look right. Why am I doing that? So discussion in degree, load equals in, discussion in degree, data frame. Let me just make sure. And let me check that I'm heading the right data object. That's in degree. Good. And you know I could always do it this way. You know, I'm going to do that. That's all I want. I'm going to check that I'm not insane. All right. Just make sure that I'm typing the right statement. OK, yeah, I get a bunch of nonsense. So one is the lowest, but let's now get this fixed. So we have discussion graph two, this is going to work. Okay, my discussion in degree, let me X out of this. And see. All right, let me confirm that your name is in degree. Your name is in degree. Yes. All right. Zero, there are some people who have no friends. And the highest person has 21, not surprising. This uh, frequent feature of social networks and a reason why directionality is particularly important. Again, if I'm thinking about these networks, um, another subsequent analysis, we won't do it right now, would be I would like to look at the, one, the ties that are actually reciprocated because that means we actually have a shared understanding about um, if we're really friends. You're going to lose some people out, um, out of out degree because uh, there are people that sent ties that receive none, but you'll generally lose fewer people in, the, in, in, in degree. Now let's make, it, let's make it pretty. All right. We had in last time, so we've looked at that, but we're going to do in. We'll just, to, just to remind people where we've been. It's really easy with degree. I'm just going to change it to in. And I'm going to visualize it. And I'm going to hope that my plot statement works, which I expect it will. OK. Yep, let's make it big. All right. OK, so this is, we've seen this before. We were seeing a fair number of people in degree. I could analyze this a little bit more. What's interesting to me is that um, while there are uh, if there are there's a fairly equal distribution of red and blue nodes that have um, high in degree. So um, remember, red and blue signifies researcher and grad students. 
Uh, red is grad students, blue is researchers. We'll see when we look at these other measures. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that there's a story where um, researchers are different from grad students in terms of a company's measures, particularly uh, closeness centrality or betweenness centrality or something like that. But, but we'll look. Okay, let's look at out. Let's look at how the network changes. So all I'm doing here is just typing out. And I'm going to highlight, well, as long as I don't make R crazy. Right, there's layout options. I was about to do a lot more than I have to do. Okay, I saw that it changed in the little window. Woo! We got some sad, desperate people. <laughs> Notice the nodes got really big. Well, that's because obviously we have a higher uh, total cap. There are many fewer people that um, have a really high out degree. We see much more concentration in our degree. We have got a couple of people that are sending lots of love to lots of other people. Uh, most of them are blue. I only see one grad student that's sending lots of out degree. Frankly, probably because grad students don't know as many people to go send love to, frankly, because uh, they are they are new initiates into this world. I do actually have the year that they're in grad school. Most of them are uh, first and second year people. Now, if I do all, which is total degree, I expect it's going to look a lot like out degree, but uh, let's just do it to see. And I think that this is a good cautionary tale that if you are working in a network where you don't know directionality, that Degree can tell you something, but if uh, the directionality of that degree can mean an awful lot, and so I would definitely want to supplement my analysis with other things. So, he, okay, here we're, um, we're seeing a little, again, a little bit more even distribution between red and blue. We're still seeing uh, bigger blue, but we, we have some red people that are getting a fair amount of in degrees, so um, the sizing of the dots is a little bit more equally distributed. Again, out of these three things, I mean, this is giving us something, but we want to drill down. So you can start with degree, that's good, and, but the comparison between in-degree and out-degree is important.